In this video, I'd like to walk you through a very interesting example to demonstrate how can we apply the common refactorings to shift a code into a better state. Um, the code snippet is from one of my students. Um, it's basically a road sorting implementation. Mm, the initial implementation has a bunch of uh, code smells. That's totally fine because everyone starts from there. Uh, even I'm still from there as well. Uh, so um, uh, the key point here is uh, we need to learn how to identify code smells and how to apply corresponding um, refactoring techniques to make it a much better version. Let's get started. So as the name suggests, it's a road sorting implementation. And um, the, there is actually a console log here. If we run this code snippet here, um, it's actually working perfectly. You can see the uh, the output is just as expected. We can use this output as a uh, test for us to guide us to make refactors, and we can run that um, occasionally and see if we break anything by checking the output. So the first code smell I noticed here is the bake function. So you can see everything. Uh, is inside the roti 13 uh, function. The alphabet setup is inside the um, row 13 and there is a function defined inside it and there is a for loop as well so it makes it a little bit hard to uh, read because it makes a lot of different things. So um, we can start from the simplest one which is the slide um, statement refactoring. So Slide statements uh, refactoring is basically moving one or multiple lines uh, up or down um, and um, make it easier to mm, manipulate or make it more easier to read. Some code are just close to uh, the others. So for example, the uh, dictionary here um, is much close to the get offset function uh, compared to the array T, right? We can slide the array close to the function get offset by using slide statement refactoring, which is command shift down. And uh, once we have this uh, moved, we can select the whole block of the array plus the get offset, and then slide this whole block up to the outside. So similarly, we can slide statements outside and uh, we have this um, moved out and uh, then if we like we can run a test here uh, see it yeah obviously it, it didn't break anything here yet uh, that's great and uh, the, the next thing i've noticed is uh, we're using the let um, keyword which we can replace that to a uh, const because we're not changing the array here so in, in WebStorm, it's very simple to do that. It's simply uh, using the context menu, which is uh, option enter. And there is a menu shows up, which suggests us to convert it to a, to a const. And um, we can do that. So it's a const array and then all the uh, alphabetas. And the next thing I noticed is uh, it's called array, but essentially we can give it a bad name like uh, letters or alphabetas or uh, dictionary that make more sense. Let, let's give it name mm, letters. So in WebStorm, you can use uh, rename refactoring, which is shift F6. And um, you can give it a better name like uh, letters. And uh, it's a little bit cleaner than before. And uh, as you can see here, there is a warning for the name, for the name get off that. Um, we can um, rename this function. We can rename the function here to make it more uh, aligned with the code standard, which is a capital O here. And it's again, it's shift F6. Um, it will uh, change both the function definition and the function usage. And the, and the next thing I noticed is um, we, we're 
we're using the let inside the road 13 as well there could be a const um, just like the other one and uh, we can rename this one to const we can change this one to const as well and another code smell I see quite a lot is people tend to use the um, the for loop especially when they don't have enough uh, experience in JavaScript so they tend to use the primary for loop instead of, instead of the um, collection APIs so obviously we can replace that here um, by a map operation whenever you see a new array and the for loop and pushing element to the array and the eventually return array that's a sign of replacing the whole thing as a map so the input here of the map is the array original we can uh, give it a bad name for now or we can do that later doesn't matter uh, but the point here is we need to using the map to replace the for loop so array all dot map for each of the item in the map uh, we should do something like this right so essentially the map is mm, just uh, looking just uh, um, walking through the uh, map, the array but it has a much concise API so what do we want to do here is using the item uh, maybe we can just simply change it to I and uh, then we can rename it to item like that and uh, then uh, the attribute target will be equals to um, the result of the map here and then we don't need this whole thing if we run the uh, test again it's not working because oh uh, yeah it's pushing uh, to the element to the array but we should instead return because we're inside a um, map so if we run test again it's uh, passing it has a except expected output great and let's see how we can simplify it even further so the array o obviously we need to rename it uh, rename a variable is a common refactoring as well rename uh, shift f6 we call it uh, original and uh, the target or output we probably can rename it to something like um, result we can even apply another uh, refactoring which is inline variable because we uh, kind of get the result here and then joined and returned it uh, we don't have to hold that variable so let's inline the variable here which will be uh, command option n uh, and uh, refactoring that will reduce uh, the variable definition and we don't need this comment just to remove it and even this one we don't need it and uh, <coughs> I believe it looks much better than before but I reckon we can do a little bit um, better so for example the map uh, has a anonymous function here because it has some logic already it might be a good idea to extract the uh, anonymous function as a named function so to extract a function uh, which itself is a refactoring we can do command option m m for method and we can define that to a global space and we will call it um, maybe translate or something like that for some reason the um, webstorm didn't do well about the extraction so let's fix that manually so we don't need this at extra layer of uh, function definition actually we need something like this will be enough and if we run the test again uh, oh yes so we are not going to pass the translate here if we run test again it will be the quick brown fox jumps over the little dog uh, that's great so now the mm, road sorting has only two lines of code we have something outside uh, has a few 
smaller functions. Let's keep refactoring the code to make it much, to make it more concise. So there are a few smaller things we can make it better. For example, the magic. So the magic separate here, we can extract a, ver a constant. In WebStorm, it's, it's command option C. Uh, we can make it local or global module constant. Replace both of them. We call it separator. Uh, that's great. And we can then move this whole part. Sorry. And then we can slide this to the top. By checking the index of if it's equals to the minus one, it's a little bit not as clear. So we can use the letters that includes instead. Uh, if the in items, if the letter includes item, we will return the get offset. Otherwise, get, um, return item. Uh, and we can even simplify that if else with this one. Uh, that will be much simpler. Awesome. And now let's look at the get offset function. Um, actually, it's not get offset um, in here. It sounds more like get um, the offsetted character or get offsetted letter. So let's rename that of shift F6. Get offset uh, letter. And uh, inside it, um, as you can see, there are a lot of duplications here. Uh, letters index of letter plus 13 and uh, it appears like three times we can maybe extract a variable for them and uh, replace three occurrences uh, we call it maybe new index and then uh, if the new index is greater than 26 we do something uh, minus 26 or otherwise we use the index itself but with a little bit uh, mathematic knowledge, we can use a mode operation to simplify that even further. By that, I mean we can return uh, letters. Um, the index will be um, the index will be uh, new index mode twenty six, and uh, we don't need this anymore. Let's run the test again, and uh, it just worked as expected. And also, I guess we can uh, rename this variable to our uh, index and maybe inline the variable into the letters like that. And also, we, we can extract this uh, 13 as a constant. Let's call it um, command option C. We call it uh, offset. The 26 here. It doesn't actually need to be extracted as a constant, um, but rather it's a letters dot links because the 26 is actually the links of the uh, dictionary. So with that, if we run test again, it's still passing. That is awesome. And now uh, we have a much better structure than before. By compare the uh, latest version and the initial version, I think you would say um, the difference. And uh, I hope you can apply these uh, common refactorings in your own code. And please let me know what you find these um, refactorings and how it can simplify your code. Maybe you can detail some examples from your code base and share it to me uh, or have discussions. Um, all kind of discussions are all welcome. And I will see you in the next video.